Tesla stock has seemingly boarded the rocket ship. The stock is up 6% today on three major catalysts. Number one, in China, Tesla just seen 17,000 insurance registrations that were reported for the week of August 21st through August 27th. And if you look at the year over year numbers, last year you were around 14. 13,000 vehicle registrations. So this is a very strong beat year over year, and it's showing some really good momentum for Tesla in China. This is great news in contrast to the numbers we could have got. The numbers could have been terrible based on some of the economic data that we have gotten out of China recently. Things are not good in China, but China loves Tesla's. Catalyst number two, Tesla's 10,000 NVIDIA H100 GPU cluster just went live today. Oppenheimer analyst Rick Schaefer said, quote, The supercomputer will employ 10,000 NVIDIA H100 GPUs and is more powerful than the world's third highest performing supercomputer. The news illustrates something about the way the AI ecosystem is evolving. NVIDIA has the hardware and software that is essentially responsible for AI computing. Tesla is using NVIDIA products to develop what Elon Musk hopes is the first truly killer AI app, self-driving cars. It looks like the markets are starting to finally recognize that one full self-driving and autonomous vehicles and robo taxis are probably going to come a lot sooner now than previously. No analyst was even talking about this Nvidia cluster or dojo as being a kind of accelerant to train FSD. You have not heard that argument once. And now the markets are starting to say, hey, this $300 million cluster of Nvidia GPUs could really speed this process up. Wall Street is behind. The information that you know today, Wall Street is getting a week later. That's to your benefit, but we've seen this coming. We expect the stock will perform well, as analysts are always behind the curve when it comes to Tesla. The third catalyst on the day today is the Jolt's job openings. This data came in 10 o'clock in the morning today, Eastern Standard Time, you were expecting 9.46 million job openings, and the Jolts number came in at 8.82 million, so way lower than expectations. Now, Fed Jerome Powell has made it very clear that in order to stop rate hikes and to eventually get rate cuts, we either need to see the unemployment rate go up, or we need to see the job openings come down. This is a huge start to that process. Once job openings come down to five or six million, then you can actually start to talk about rate cuts. If we get job openings down and the unemployment rate does not rise or does not rise too much, that is your soft landing. So today, a soft landing just got a lot more likely. These jolts job opening numbers coming in far lower than expectations is having a big effect on treasury yields as well. The 10 year treasury is down nine basis points on the day, sitting at 4.12%, and the two year treasury is dropping more than that, trading at 4.88%, down 13 basis points on the day. That's equivalent to half of a typical rate cut of 25 basis points that's a huge move for the treasuries this move down in bond yields is having a direct effect on tesla stock why is that well tesla is not a finance company but their customers need to finance their product so any thing that really has to do with credit today is doing very well tesla about 90 percent of new vehicles bought are financed. So this should help bring down some of those financing costs and help even Tesla's investments become a little bit cheaper if Tesla did have to go to the bond market per se and raise capital. As the soft landing narrative has gotten better, the odds of a recession have fallen today. And that's great news for Tesla. In what I would argue probably the most sensitive area of the economy, 
if we were to go into a recession. So this is all around great news for the markets, but specifically for Tesla. Now, obviously, the good news does not stop there. FSD Beta is now available on all hardware for Teslas in North America. As Sawyer Merritt does point out, Elon Musk did not say it would not be available for hardware for users, but the performance might lag what Hardware 3 was for a while, until the systems get used to Hardware 4. Not that we will not have full self-driving in Hardware 4s for 6 months. Just the performance might be a little bit different. Elon Musk says that X will create an app that will allow you to use it in your Tesla. This just further follows the evolution of this Tesla vehicle. The more incentives that you can give, the more technology that you can put in a Tesla, the more they're going to sell. The bigger bang for your buck, if you will, you get buying a Tesla compared to legacy OEMs. This is another step in the right direction. The Tesla Model 3 Project Highland has been spotted for the first time in Europe. This was spotted in Germany by Autobahn A4 close to Lichitao. And you guys can see it's covered up. And... Uh, some form of testing probably being done we know we are weeks away maybe days away from an actual launch of this product at least in china we've already seen reservations go up at tesla showrooms so hopefully this comes sooner rather than later i would say this is a good sign of that sawyer Merritt on twitter is breaking down a little bit of confusion that some investors have regarding this 10,000 unit H100 GPU cluster and the in-house Tesla Dojo supercomputer that started production last month. There are two separate things. Consider Tesla's Nvidia H100 GPU cluster like Apple using Intel chips. They are powerful, but not as optimized as Tesla would like. Now consider Tesla's own vertically integrated Dojo supercomputer system, like Apple's in-house designed silicon chips, which are hyper-optimized and specifically designed to bring next-level performance and efficiency. This will enable Tesla to improve FSD faster and unlock next-level compute capabilities, but Tesla will use both to improve FSD. By next year, Tesla's Dojo supercomputer is projected to be one of the most powerful supercomputers in the world. Ten years ago today, the first six supercharger stations opened in Norway. Now our network spans 36 countries, 1,000 plus sites, and 13,000 plus supercharger posts, enabling freedom of travel no matter your destination. And Tesla? in an anniversary of this 10 year date they will be allowing you to charge your tesla or ev in general throughout europe for free today and for your daily dose of the cyber truck it looks like a long kind of convoy of cyber trucks i can't tell exactly how many but quite a few of them are being spotted what looks like in the Arizona region again not quite a hundred percent sure but a good sign to see more cyber trucks every single day cyber truck interest from Google Trends worldwide over the past 90 days sure looks encouraging as well as you can see prior to really June you were around the high teens 16 17 18 all the way up to the high 20s for interest of the cyber truck and right now you're sitting at 41 recently hitting a high of 43 and on this upward tr kind of climb since august 14th which is interesting because the number one most searched region for the cyber truck is actually in iceland Number two is the United States, 
number three is Canada, number four is China, and number five is New Zealand. A three megawatt slash 12 megawatt hour Tesla Megapack system paired with four megawatt hours of solar panels provides the Kona village in Hawaii with 100% renewable energy. Tesla microgrid controls also make the grid more resilient. We also have some pretty big news coming out today that Samsung is reportedly becoming Tesla's primary provider for their fifth generation self-driving chip hardware 5. This advanced chip is expected to utilize a cutting edge 4 nanometer process according to news publication Business Korea. Earlier in May of this year, Elon Musk met with Samsung chairman Lee Je Young in Silicon Valley for the first time. Origin shaves off up to 3800 for new Tesla Powerwalls for households. Under this offer, all households will save $2,300 off the standalone price of a Tesla Powerwall, with an additional $1,500 available to those who agree to join Origin's Energy's virtual power plant, Origin Loop. This is for Australia, specifically for New South Wales, Victoria, Southeast Queensland, and South Australia. In other news, Toyota is going to restart Japan production on Wednesday after their system failed. Says Toyota will resume operations at 25 production lines of a dozen plants in its home market for wins from Wednesday morning and add the final two plants from the afternoon, they said. The company continues to investigate the cause of the glitch, which said was not due to a cyber attack and prevented it from ordering components. Huh. Very weird. Redwood Materials, run by ex-Tesla CTO, raises $1 billion to expand recycling operations in the U.S. Tesla's former CTO, J.B. Strobel, battery component recycling startup, has raised a huge new round of funding. The company will use it along with a $2 billion loan commitment from the Department of Energy to expand outside its base in Carson City, Nevada. This could also be having a positive effect on Tesla today. Twitter, well now X, obtains license required for crypto payments and trading. As well as that, VinFast Auto, the hottest new EV stock out there on the markets that surged from its IPO price of about $10 per share all the way to $93 per share, is down almost 38% today. Some of those traders and some of that money looks to be making its way to other EV names today, notably Tesla, Rivian, and the likes. This could be having another incremental positive effect on Tesla's share price today. And finally, in a little bit of bad news, the former White House economic advisor says more Fed hiking is coming. This is the former White House economist, Kevin Hasnett. He does say that, well, we're going to see another inflation wave stimulated by high growth in energy prices. I doubt it. But it's a possibility that the Fed does raise rates one or two more times. But again, it just depends on the data. Tesla stock now at the time of recording this video is up 6.87%. The last time you were up this much was well when we bounced off of the lows on August 21st. Tesla stock closed that trading day up 7.33%. But besides that, the last time that you were up 6.88% or more in a single day was back here on March 21st. So these big days do not happen all too often for an over $700 billion market cap company. This is a very big deal. And you're approaching a very important level. And that level is the 50-day moving average. The 50-day moving average is at $256.98 per share. If you break above that, then your next stop is that 265 and then ultimately $300 level. So if the markets bounce from here and Tesla stock continues, we could be in the 300s in no time at all.
especially considering we have the Cybertruck event date that should be coming up anytime, the refreshed Model 3 that should be launching anytime, and many other catalysts. But we are going to be getting some economic data over the next three trading days that will really test this rally. And to the point that I made earlier, one of the reasons why Tesla stock is ripping higher today is the Jolt's job openings coming in so much lower than expectations. And again, either job openings falling or unemployment rising is what the Fed needs to see to eventually start cutting rates. So this is great. But wait, on Friday, we're going to get the unemployment rate. So if the unemployment rate shoots higher, then it doesn't even matter that the job openings fell because the unemployment rate rose and that's that hard landing. So what you want to see now is the unemployment rate coming in line with expectations, the expectation for the government payroll report on Friday and the unemployment rate is 3.5%. A move up to like 3.6% would be okay. Anything above 3.7% or higher, the markets, they're not going to care about the job openings falling. They're going to focus on the unemployment rate. So on Friday is going to be a big test to this market and especially to the Jolt's job openings. Again, it does not matter if the job openings fell, but the unemployment rate rose. You want to see, in theory, the unemployment rate stay low and the job openings come down. If that doesn't happen, well, that could be a problem. But even tomorrow, we're going to have some very important economic data as well. So 8.15 a.m. tomorrow, Eastern Standard Time, we're going to get the ADP employment change for August. You're expecting 195,000 net job ads. Now, this does to some degree correlate with the government report. This is the non-government report of jobs so the markets don't pay attention to this one as much but if you get a big drop or a big increase that can and does move the markets so keep that in mind that data does come out tomorrow and then you're going to get wholesale inventories month over month you're expecting that at negative half of a percent um and this is month over month so inventory is kind of falling is usually a good thing uh, rather than a bad thing so that could be a positive catalyst as well coming tomorrow and then you're going to get a lot of your final estimates for uh q2 gdp core pce corporate profits so on and so forth so a lot of revisions to data will come tomorrow revisions don't move the markets unless you get kind of a big revision up or down that can move the markets but i think the main story is the adp employment change at least coming tomorrow morning tesla's option activity today pretty positive 61 percent positive order value i i like to explain this as a hundred dollar bill if you've seen a hundred dollar bill go into tesla options 61 dollars of that hundred dollar bill went into bullish options whether that is buying calls or selling puts 49 percent today well, went into, well, 39% went into bearish options. So that would be buying puts or selling calls. So today, pretty good day. You have seen 1,027 hedge fund and institutional orders worth $329 million. So it's a relatively low dollar amount going into Tesla options today. And that is because I would speculate a lot of investors are underweight Tesla shares and they're probably going out and buying the actual shares instead of the options. The current short position in Tesla is sitting at 19.15 billion. This is still up almost 8% within the last three months. So think about what has happened the last three months. Tesla stock was a lot higher around $300 and has recently fallen. So you have seen some pressure taken off shorts in recent months, but still the shorts are not opting to cover on their positions. They're just riding the wave. And if Tesla stock does continue higher, that could put shorts in a very bad situation and potentially start to squeeze some of them out of their positions. And that is one way that we get to 300 or even higher.
than 300 in the next coming days and weeks. So that is your Tesla update for the day today. Let me know what you think about Tesla stock, how you are positioning your portfolio in Tesla following today's 7% rally in the stock hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you made it to the end of this video as well as if you guys want to come trade with me live in real time see all of the moves that i am making with tesla any other stock option and or crypto link down below in the description of this video you guys enjoy the rest of your day and i will see you in the next one